Good evening, everybody. We're going to be in number 343 in your hymns. 343. Springs of living water. We'll sing it on that first and last verse. I thirsted in the barren land. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame. And nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came. Where springs of living water did abound. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh wonderful and bountiful. Third verse, oh sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. You sing. you're back here this evening and looking forward to see what the Lord has. Let's, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the service this morning. We thank you for the ones that were saved and baptized. And we thank you so much for that and give you praise and glory and honor um, for you saving their soul. And we thank you for preacher's influence um, in the deaf culture and the deaf world and that those two souls may know you because of that. We thank you for that. Lord, we ask today that this service this afternoon would get, bring honor and glory to you and your son's name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. All right, number 548 in your hymns. We'll sing on that first and last verse. Make me a servant like you, dear Lord, living for others each day. Humble and meek, helping the weak, loving. my life take every part give me lord a servant's heart help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through give me lord a servant's heart give me lord a servant's heart make me a witness like you, dear Lord, showing the love of the cross, sharing your word till all have heard, serving whatever the cost. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Here's my life. Take every part. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Give me, Lord, a servant's visitor tonight and have not received a visitor card, uh, we would love to give you one and have a record of your visit. Our ushers in the back would love to give you one. So if you're a visitor tonight and have not received a visitor card, we would love to give you one. So if you just raise your hand so we can uh, just grab our attention, we'll not embarrass you, but one of our ushers will come right to you and give you a uh, visitor card uh, this afternoon. Anybody like that here? Oh, visitor here by Jedi, very good, very good. Well, we're glad you're here. Fantastic. Perfect. Awesome, awesome. So someone will help you fill that out. At the end of the service, we'll get you a gift, okay? Glad you're here. Anybody else? 
All right. Very good. Glad you're here. All right. Thank you, Brother Buster. We're going to have scripture songs right now. Grant and Miranda, come on, get your place. Um, just want to take a moment and say a big thank you to Brother Bussey for preaching the Holy Spirit this summer on Wednesday nights. What a blessing that's been. And I've gotten some positive feedback from that. This Wednesday night, the two of us will be gone. He'll be at Hammond with our teenagers, and I'll be in Florida. My wife and I have an early flight to Florida tomorrow morning, speaking at a camp all week until Friday night. Then they're having a big outreach rally to deaf and teens, and they have me preaching in Sunday at the same time on Friday night, and then we'll be back Saturday. Then I'll be home the next three Wednesday nights. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so travel will start slowing down. But this Wednesday night, you got a treat. Brother Rick Hurst will be speaking for us Wednesday night, one of our deacons. And I love that man. And his goal is to top Brother Kuntz's 54 minutes, right? <laughs> so that'll be great. Now, we really appreciate Brother Kuntz filling in that time. And just what a blessing. We have so many capable preachers and teachers in this church. Uh, and thank God for our song leader. This morning, I was uh, drinking a water bottle, and it was down near the end. And uh, Josh said, that's, is that your water bottle or mine? I said, I think it's mine. He goes, no, that's mine. He picked it up. He licks the top of the bottle to, to, I guess, to mark the water bottle, goes ahead and drinks it, and then finds his water bottle later. So he drank my water bottle, and uh, we have community water up here on the platform. I just want everybody to know. So he just, he, he, he just boosted his immune system by drinking my water bottle. So amen. So appreciate that so much. All right, Grant. You ready for some scripture songs? You want them standing up or sitting? We're going to stand up. Come on. We're going to stand up again. We're going to sing three scripture songs tonight. We're going to sing 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to go over to Joshua 1, 8, and then we're going to go over to uh, Psalms 18. Can the sound of you guys get it up there? If not, everyone pull out your Bibles unless you have it memorized. 1 Thessalonians 5, we're going to be reading uh, the, a few of the verses there. Rejoice evermore. Okay, we'll go ahead and start. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not. Abstain from all appearance of evil. We're going to go over that one right uh, one more time. Just think about those verses real quick. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Give, and everything give thanks. Here we go. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the way. Now we're going to go over to Joshua 1.8. <clears throat> that one's this book of the law. I know we went over it this morning, but we need to get that one down. So we're going to keep going over that one. Here we go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. We're going to go over that one one more time. Here we go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest All right, we're going to do uh, one more. We're going to do the repeat one, Psalms 18, I will call upon the Lord. So the men are going to do the first part, and then ladies are going to do the uh, second part, and then we're all going to come in on that verse 46. Here we go. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies.
Let's do it one more time. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. And I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth and blessed be the rock of the God of my salvation. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Very good, you all may see it. All right, well, um, Miss Jennifer back here says she knows a scripture song and she would like, this is her, she would like Miss Nikki and her dad to come up and help her, them lead us in 1 John 4, 7, and 8. She said you both know it. So, Miss Nikki, Brother George, come on up here. You're, this is Jim, Miss Jennifer's doing. Brother Coons, you know this song too? Yeah, come on up. Yeah, she said you know it. Come on up, Brother Coons. Come on up, Nikki. Come on up, Brother George. That's what I love about scripture songs, by the way. If you're out here and you know scripture songs, get with Grant and Rihanna. And, uh, but Miss Jennifer is adamant that you all sing it tonight. I was about to make her do it herself, but she made you guys come up with her. So... All right, church, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Sound room in, this is last minute, so it's no problem if you want to take your Bibles and open them up there. 1 John 4, 7 and 8, take it. It was from Salty, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, who, whoever listened to Salty? That's what it's, wow, nobody. <laughs> salty the singing songbook. Yes, yeah. Salty the singing songbook. Put it up there, we see it. Okay. It must have been a sailor. He was <laughs> Okay. All right. So it's uh, 1 John 4, 7, and 8. Beloved, let, let us love one another, love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. Beloved. <laughs> Let us love one another, 1 John 4, 7, and 8. I thought you knew it. I know it once I heard it. Beloved, let us love one another, love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love, God is love, beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. All right, let's take a favorite tonight. Who's got their hand up? Grant. 587, all right. One verse of 587, which verse, Grant? Three. Verse three, ooh, I like it. I heard about a mansion, every voice. I heard about a mansion, he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. Love me ere I do him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Another one. Who's got another favorite? Yes, ma'am. Say it again. 304. 304. I hope I know it. 304. Yeah, I do. Okay. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll make this our handshaking song. I'll give you a second. I ask a lot of you in a short amount of time, and I apologize. All right. I am adopted. I'm a child of the king. God is my father. 
Father, and he owns everything. He walks beside me, he's my very best friend. Praise God, I'll never be lonely again. I'm adopted, hallelujah, I've got a new song. I'm adopted, hallelujah, I finally belong. I've got a brand new family overflowing with love. I'm a child of my Father above. Go ahead and shake hands. I'm adopted, hallelujah, I've got a new song. I'm adopted, hallelujah, I finally belong. I've got a brand new family overflowing with love. I'm a child of my father above. Verse 1 again. I am adopted, I'm a child of the king. God is my father, and he owns everything. He walks beside me. He's my very best friend. Praise God, I'll never be lonely again. You sing. Hallelujah, I finally belong. 
I've got a brand new family overflowing with love. I'm a child of my Father above. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Charles Mousy, he's, uh, he's watching online. He wants the church to pray for him as he's uh, recovering from some side effects from some medicine. So pray for the Char Charles Mousy. He's such a blessing. So pray for him. Lift him up. It's been requested for several weeks now to have a reunion youth choir, an alumni youth choir. And Kenny, I think you were sick a few weeks ago and they requested uh, uh, Meanwhile at the Cross. Are you willing to sing that tonight? All right. Let's go ahead and get the reunion. Hannah, you want to see Wes get up here sing, don't you? All right, let's get the reunion crowd. JC, Neil, come on up here. Robbie, Corinna. We're going to have them sing Meanwhile, Back at the Cross. I love that song. We, Eric, come on up here. Oh, yeah, Eric's alumni now. Eric, how does it feel to be old? Yeah. And uh, Jared Miller's coming up here. Very good. Want to miss him? I might be missing some others that are scattered out. Kristen, didn't you sing in there? Are you, are you sure, Miss Kristen? Who are you pointing at, Brother Herb? Justin Mitchell used to sing in the youth choir. Where's Justin at? Yeah, you used to sing in the youth choir, didn't you? If you say he said, if you say so. Your dad's calling you out. I'm not. Your dad's calling you out. 
You'll take his word for it. So you're willing to come up here and join him, even though if you don't know the song? Sure, come on. <laughs> Amen. Brother George used to be in the youth choir, right? <laughs> with Moses. <laughs> with Moses. Brother George sang with Moses. Brother George sang bass and Brother Moses sang tenor, huh? All right. A good testimony. Amanda Davis just told me during the handshaking time that she said, boy, Jason getting saved today is like a huge miracle. A lot of people, it, it's like one of those in the deaf world is going to send shockwaves. Like, what, who got saved, you know, because of his testimony? And so praise the Lord for our deaf ministry. I was just thinking about seeing two sisters up here singing, signing the songs. Both of them are deaf. Of course, Caleb is deaf too. And many of you may not know this, but Michelle, who's signing down here in the front pew, got saved first of all that family years ago in the old building. And then Sean, he, he, Sean, when he first came, thought he was all big and bad. He's kind of one of those big and bad boys, you know. And he wanted to date Michelle. And Michelle said, I won't date you unless you come to church. And he came to church and met me and Brother Nick. And he got scared of me and Brother Nick, right, Sean? <laughs> he said, nah, nah. <laughs> and uh, after church one Sunday morning, man, me and Brother Sean went to the old Sunday school classroom over there and I led him to the Lord, and he got saved, and then to marry them, and now to see th own, three of their deaf kids now in the, in the church and in the youth choir and singing. What a blessing that is. Of course, Caleb is now called to preach. Where's Caleb? Oh, he's up there in the balcony. Okay, yeah, he's not even paying attention. But anyway, <laughs> no. But uh, just a, what a blessing our deaf ministry is. We're so thankful for that. Praise the Lord for that. So God is good. He's doing some great things. All right, let's see. And here's, here's why, because of the cross. Amen. devil laughed and yeah. said, I've won. God has lost his only son. The brightest star no longer shines. Finally, this world is mine. Then he gathered all his said we have conquered love with fear said we'll use their pride we'll attack them from inside fill their hearts with vanity till their differences are all they'll see black and white rich and poor to justify their holy war. Son. 
cross. Amen. Get a little overwhelmed sometimes. I think about the goodness of the Lord, and you know, I'm in a lot of churches, especially in the summer. But there's no place like BBC, man. I love listening to those kids sing, and I got the little guys right behind me there, and just I just love my church, Amen. First, uh, First Thessalonians five. Let's go ahead and stand together and uh, read a few scriptures here tonight. Can I just say something to the college and career group right now? Thanks for breaking the norm. Thanks for breaking the trend. I'm proud of these young people, man. It's that 80% of our young people that leave as soon as they turn 18. This group that's come out in the last few years has broken, has busted that stat all to pieces. And so I'm sure proud of you guys and love you all so much. And it's hard to believe they're all adults now and they, they're paying bills. And they're married. And, uh, I remember when they were little kids running around here, and now they're just, you know, it's just a blessing. I'm proud of you guys. I want you to know that I am. Man, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on tonight. I just, uh... All right, first Samuel, I mean, first, not first Samuel, first Thessalonians. Good night. Am I in Jefferson City tonight? Okay, I just got to make sure. All right. Look at verse 16. The Bible says, rejoice evermore. Look at your neighbor and just say, rejoice evermore. Tonight I want to talk about when the Christian has laryngitis. Christian has laryngitis. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then verse number 19, I love this one too. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. You may be seated. Hands and girls will come sing for us again. Praise the Lord. If you have felt the dark of night, questioning what is out of sight, he is the answer, he is the light. If you have felt the weight of sin, bound by the shame that hemmed you in, he'll break the chains. He will forgive. Lift your head. Morning is coming. There's more to the story. Don't forget. In grief and in glory, still great is his faithfulness. felt broken and betrayed no one to trust alone afraid he'll comfort you he knows your name if you wrestled with the ache of loss and what is has been your all to walk he bore your pain to the story don't forget in grief and in glory still great is his 
Mr. Loretta leave during preaching time. We understand how that goes. Amen. Hey, have a great time in the prisons. Love y'all. Amen. All right. I think one of the things when we get to heaven and we start to we see the, the, the presence, if we're in the presence of God and we see God. And Brother John mentioned this morning in Sunday school, there's probably no way we'll actually even remember the burdens and trials. I'm sure we won't be representing our case to God about why he made us go through certain things once we see him. But I also think when we get to heaven... Maybe it'll dawn on us then more so than it should, than it will, than it should really bother. It should really hit us now, is this fact that while we're here on earth, we have the ability uh, to go into His presence now. I'll never forget many years ago, my daughter Clara. She was probably four or five years old, and she was playing basketball for the Upward Basketball League, and it, it happened to fall on her birthday that Saturday, and she knew what birthday meant, and Daddy's going to take, I, on every, all my four children's birthdays, every year I take them out to eat, just me and the kid, and, and we'll have a lunch or a meal together, and then we'll go buy a gift or something. And uh, so that day, Clara was completely useless on the basketball court. She just didn't care about basketball. She just couldn't wait to get home and dress up in her beautiful dress, and, and for her Daddy to take her out on a date. And uh, I never forgot that, and, and, and the Lord used that to prepare my heart one time about how she was excited about being in her father's presence for just a few hours, just the two of us. And I, I fear as Christians today, the reason the church has laryngitis and the reason the church has lost its voice is because Christians have forgotten that, that the precious potential we have in going in the presence of God. And going in the presence of God for the actual prayer time uh, actually, the fact is we're in his presence all the time. And the all the time concept, the principle of just walking with him all the time. I think pray without ceasing has been, has been preached in so many different ways that I'm confused about what the verse really means. But when it's all said and done, it simply means he's on call all the time. Uh, yesterday morning, I, I had a whole lot of things to do to catch up from traveling. And my day started really early at 4 a.m. And, 
And I had to call my wife like three times. I didn't want to bother. She's sleeping. But between eight and noon, I think I called her like six times. She kept saying, what else do you need? And I finally said, this will be the last time I call you. But, but it's like that. Just at the drop of a hat, I needed to call my wife about something. And she answered. That's the kind of relationship we should have with God. And may I say to this, we many times make that relationship so one-sided. Meaning it's all about my, my angle. What? What do I get? Boy, oh, it's such a blessing to be in his presence. It's such a blessing to, to be one-on-one with him. Oh, oh, he blesses me and he forgives me. But, but don't forget, God equally desires that. While there was a four-year-old girl who was ignoring her basketball responsibilities that day because she was excited about having lunch with her dad, her dad was also excited about having lunch with her. And while the kid sometimes gets excited when mom or dad take him to do something for their birthday, they forget that the parents do as well. And And tonight I want to remind you that God, the creator of this universe, loves to hear your voice. For some reason, we've gotten quiet. We don't pray like we used to. And Brother Nick's message a few weeks ago on Sunday night was powerful on Be Merry. And and he preached that at DBFA. And I, wow, I mean, he was was really anointed that night. I mean, God was all over him on that message. And the deaf crowd flooded the altars as Brother Nick preached in power and ASL on that. And, um, and so tonight I want to give you just four simple thoughts that help us be always in preparation mode to enter his presence. Number one, and I very simple, ready? Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. We as Christians have allowed the world, don't miss this now, the world to trick us into thinking we have to give up our joy. Here's what the Bible says in John chapter 60, verse 22. Jesus said this, you ready? Your joy no man taketh from you. Nobody can take the joy that God gives to us. Nobody can. Which means if we don't have the joy of the Lord, it's our fault. It's much like uh, Revelation chapter 2 where it says that God had someone against the church of Ephesus because thou hast left thy first love. It doesn't say they lost it. He said they just left it somewhere. And I believe many times Christians leave their joy. And this is so critical because this is going to affect the next three things we need to do as Christians when we prepare ourselves continually to be in the presence of God. To be able to to, to have that one-on-one relationship with him. To commune with him. To share with him everything that's on our heart. Sometimes it's in a prayer form. Sometimes you're going to get on your knees. Sometimes you're just going to talk to him. Sometimes you're just going to weep. Sometimes you're just going to laugh. Sometimes you're just going to share his blessing with somebody else and know he's listening. I'm simply saying that all of us, all of us tonight, have the potential to walk with the King of Kings And Lord of Lords. Anytime we want to, we have access to Him. And number one tonight, rejoice evermore. As we enter His presence, may He know that we are so happy, so full of joy to be in His presence. And we understand there's a difference between the condition of joy and the emotion of happiness. But I've learned this the stronger the joy, the more potential for happiness. There's a lot of truth to that. And Christians have allowed our joy to to wane. We've been beat down. We've become discouraged. We listen to too much of what's going on out there. The devil's feeding our thoughts and our minds. And we just get to the point sometimes where we feel like we're just hanging on. Hey, hey, hey. We don't have to feel that way tonight. Because we, tonight, have access to God. Number one tonight, rejoice evermore. No man can take the joy that God has given to you and me. No man can take it. No, but you can't take it if you try. But I believe I can lay it down. I believe I can push it aside. I believe I can let other things flood it or drown it out. I believe burdens and so on can, can kind of mask the joy that I'm supposed to have. Joy is something God gave to us. God did not promise us happiness. He promises us joy. And God gifts it to you and me. And we have access to his joy all the time. You've heard me say this illustration so many times it's worth repeating again. Uh, I have to preach sometimes a funeral and a wedding in the same day. I've done it four times in my ministry. I've also, I think, five or six times visited a newborn baby in the morning and then preached a funeral in the afternoon. In both instances, my emotions changed In one instance, I was happy. In the other instance, I was sad. But in both situations, I had joy. Joy is something that you and I have 
for all eternity. And I don't believe it's going to stop when we get to heaven because it says here, rejoice evermore. We are to have joy for all eternity. I know life is hard. I know it's difficult. I know we feel beat down. I know we get stressed. I know uh, things kind of got bogged down and sometimes your relationships are, are struggling. Maybe your marriage is a little struggling right now. Maybe there's just, you're financially struggling. There's just different things that happen and, and we start to get a little bit blah. But let me remind you tonight. Use your voice. Remind God. God, hey, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes I'm frustrated. But God, thank you for the joy you've given to me. And that then leads to number two where we will desire to pray without ceasing. Now, pray without ceasing is such, a, such an interesting verse. Uh, Brother Bussy, I bet if the two of us preached on this verse 20 times, 10 times each, we probably could preach it 20 different ways. It's such an interesting verse. You can emphasize the word pray. You can emphasize the word without. And you can emphasize the word ceasing. And as I was studying this verse this week and thinking about it, it's three simple words. This chapter has a lot of short verses. I believe when it's all said and done, it's just... It's just a consciousness knowing that at any time you can just utter words and God will listen. Just like when I called my wife yesterday, and, and to her credit, she answered every time I called, which is so rare in the ding house. Can I get a amen, kids? How many times we have to call each other and say, hey, could you please tell mommy to answer the phone? And my kids will call me if I'm with her and say, hey, mom's not answering her phone. And it's 8 o'clock at night. She forgot to turn the silencer off since the morning, right? And we like to tease her a lot about that. But, but listen, can I tell you something? Anytime you utter something to God, he listens. He listens. It's a guarantee. He hears the prayer from your heart. And I believe that we are more motivated and more consistent in our prayer without ceasing when we back up to that first step, rejoice evermore. You understand that Paul, writing this letter of the Spirit of God, nothing's written in accident. Nothing's out of order. It's God's purpose here. Rejoice evermore. Hey, 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 next. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. You know, when I first got saved, I used to be so, so amazed by these stories of men that would get up at 4 a.m. and pray for four hours every morning. You heard the stories of George Mueller, and, and you hear the stories of these wonderful prayer warriors of, of old. Can I be honest with you? I travel and preach with some of the greatest Christians I know in my life. I don't know anybody that prays four hours straight a day now. It dawned on me one time, those guys went to bed at 7 p.m. at night. You know, they'd get up at 4 a.m. I'm not saying we should not do that. We should do it from time to time. However, I think God knew that society would change, times would change. And God is saying, listen to me. You can still pray four hours a day, but spread it out over the course of 14 or 15 hours. You can pray during the morning. Something difficult comes up at work, take a moment to pray about it. You start to feel like you're getting a cold, take a moment to pray about it. Your wife calls because someone is sick or uh, some friend got hurt or, or something happened. Take a moment to pray about it. You just pray all day long. Something comes, you get a text message or you, you read the news, you hear about something that happened. Another shooting, you immediately start to pray about it. You hear something about Biden, you immediately pray. You pray even harder. Once again, Biden speaks and you pray every time he speaks. Somebody say amen right there, right? I mean, just, just taking the opportunity to pray and without realizing all day long, you have spent that four hours in prayer. You spent that three hours in prayer. You're not worried about the time. It's the fact that you and I have a voice box. It does not have to have laryngitis. I think many times we Christians have allowed the world to tell us we have no voice anymore. But watch this now. The church will not have laryngitis when the Christian does not have laryngitis. This morning, the church losing its voice is because the Christian in its walk with God has lost their voice. And the devil would love nothing more than for you and me to have some kind of a hindered concept of, of, of trying to put us at a battle against God. Asking God questions that, that come from a, from a spirit of bitterness. And by the way, I always say everybody can ask God questions. God's a big boy. He can handle it. God's not intimidated by questions. I, I've asked him why many times. And he doesn't always answer. And he doesn't have to answer. He's God. But the point is this. To just know that at any moment, you can call upon his name and he will hear. Rejoice. Pray. Now, number three, and I love this one. Be vocally thankful. Be vocally thankful. Now, this verse is so powerful. I've, I've read this verse thousands of times just to remind myself. I read it after I preach, almost every time I preach, just to remind me, hey, in everything give thanks. 
in everything, everything, good and bad, everything. Now watch this. It says here, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God. There's only two or three instances in the Bible where it specifically says this is the will of God. Another one is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 where it says it's the will of God for us to abstain from fornication. Teenagers, that's God's will. Sometimes teenagers ask me right now, what's God's will for my life? Stay pure. That's God's will for you right now as a teenager. Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be a preacher or a mission. I don't know if I'm supposed to, who I'm supposed to marry. Just stay pure. That's God's will. Well, here's one that goes with us to our grave. Be thankful. And I believe this. We need to be vocally thankful. I think we should take time to thank God vocally, whether it's at church, amidst our family, and even in public sometimes. Shock the world sometimes and tell people you're thankful. Uh, we, we need to lose this. Last Tuesday was a little fun. I, I embarrassed my wife several times at the airport. I kept telling people we were celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary. I'm like, yeah, I've been married to this woman right here for 25 years. And, you know, people looking at me funny, but they said a lot of, oh, well, congratulations on stuff. I was expecting some free stuff. I didn't get as much free stuff as I wanted. Maybe a free drink or a free sandwich or free something, but I didn't get that. But I was unashamed to tell everybody, hey, hey, we've been married for 25 years. I'm still unashamed to say it tonight. Hey, church, that woman's been married to me for 25 years. Glory to God, right? Vocally thankful. I saw that, Miss Stacy. You may, she said, wow, bless Janelle's heart. She pretty much said it right there, right? I know sign language. You forgot I know sign language, right? But being vocally thankful. I mean, just thanking God no matter where you are. I've told this story before. One time a pastor was late and getting me to the airport while I was preaching at a youth conference in Michigan. And, and man, I, he, he pulled up at the front of the door and I jumped out and I ran as fast as I could. I got in, I went to the front desk and I said, man, please, I'm on flight number da 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 And I said, I, I'm afraid I'm late. She looked down and said, you made it by five minutes. Oh, I said, oh, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now watch, there's one thing to say praise God or thank you, God. But when you throw out the name Jesus, things get, yeah, it gets a little awkward sometimes in public places. As soon as I said that, without even realizing it, it got real quiet for a second. And there was a black lady sitting behind the counter, and she said, Brother, help yourself. I'll praise Jesus with you. And we took turns praising God while I got checked in for the flight. Vocally thanking God. Vocally telling people everywhere I go, vocally thanking Him. When's the last time you sat alone with nobody around and just made a list of 50 things and just thanked them for them? Who likes a hot shower tonight? Who likes a hot shower? Have you thanked them for that? Who likes a nice, comfortable bed? Would you raise your hand? Have you thanked them for that? Who likes air conditioning? Oh, praise God, this time of year, air conditioning, what a blessing. Can you imagine life without air conditioning? I remember I went to the Philippines to preach. Everywhere I stayed and slept, they had air conditioning. I said, brother, no, no, I'm a little disappointed. I thought I was, was going to live a little bit more rugged and have no air conditioning. He goes, no, no, no. We put all you Americans in air conditioning because we want you to come back to our country. <laughs> I was like, well, shame on us, right? I thank God for the food we eat, the cars we drive. Yeah, gas prices are high, but we still made it to church today, didn't we? We still got a parking lot full of cars all over the place. To be vocally thankful for the little things and the big things. My wife didn't know this. I specifically prayed Tuesday morning on our anniversary that one of us would lead someone to the Lord on our anniversary. Tuesday night at the youth conference, a young lady came to the Ford at the altar, and my wife got the leader of the Lord on Tuesday night. So I want to vocally thank the Lord for that. He answered the prayer. Well, are you selfish praying for that? You, whatever. You can judge me however way you want. The fact is a young lady got saved on her anniversary. Praise the Lord for that. And then God saves two deaf people this morning here. I want to vocally thank him for that. Hey, have you been blessed lately? Let's be vocally thankful. In fact, let's take two minutes. I'm going to stop right now. Just tell somebody right around you what you're thankful for. Go ahead real quickly. Come on. Come on. Take up two minutes and tell somebody what you're thankful for right there in your pew. You can get them walk around a little bit if you want. What are you thankful for? Go ahead. Vocally thankful. (laughs) Brother Tim, I'm thankful for you. He said he's thankful, amen. <laughs> That's vocal thankful. God understands that, amen. 
Take another minute. Thankful. What are you thankful for? Can I tell you something? I believe this. The more vocally and thankful we are in private, the more vocally we'll be in public. In church, there'll be more praise. There'll be more excitement. There'll be more thankfulness. Brother Sean's thanking my dad for being a Sunday school teacher for so long. Amen. When Brother Sean was a new Christian. My dad was actually still a Sunday school teacher back then. Amen. So just being vocally thankful. I'm vocally thankful. The Millers are moving after next Sunday. And this morning you were in junior church. I was telling them how many hours you guys have spent with bus kids and the time you've taken. And, and the one summer when we were really kind of in a, in a valley without staff and I was on the road. And they took a week off of work, both of them, and took like 80 kids to camp. 80 juniors and teens and workers to camp on like three or four different vehicles, right? And you drove one of the buses, right, Brother Trevor? No complaints. We need to be vocally thankful. Hey, young person, have you been vocally thankful for your parents lately? Vo There's something powerful in, in saying, uttering the words with your lips, thankful. That's what the book of Psalms is all about. Hey, hey, you will not struggle with laryngitis when you learn the power and the art and the blessing of publicly saying it, privately saying it, saying it loud, saying it quietly, whatever it is, just telling God, thank you. And thanking his people too. Number four, and I'm done. Those three things lead to a very important principle I want to teach. I want to shift the mindset on this. And you'll find in verse number 19, it says, quench, quench not the spirit. Quench, not the Spirit. Now, this is a, an interesting verse. It simply means, it mean, we know what it means. It means don't do something that stops the Spirit from working. Well, I'm going to see these guys going to prison ministry. I love that. Thank God for those that go to the... Watch this. How about this? Instead of always worrying about... See, Christianity sometimes cracks me up. We, we, so we, we always worry about the things we can't do. We forget about the things we can do. Right? I mean, it's like, oh my goodness, I gotta, I gotta walk on eggshells. I don't want to quench the spirit. How about this? How about this? How about here's the statement number four. You ready? Keep the spirit happy. The Holy Spirit. This verse teaches me a powerful principle about one person of the Godhead. He actually can be grieved and he can be made happy. The Bible says in other verses, grieve not the spirit. If he can be grieved, that means he can also be relieved. How about instead of, and Christians are like this, what's wrong with that? How about this, what's right with it? Shift our mindset sometimes. We're always trying to find a way uh, to, to get around things. We're trying to find loopholes. Hey, the Christian life is not full of politicians. Help me out right now, okay? We need to be Christians that just strive to keep the Spirit of God happy. And I'll tell you how you can do that. Do number one, two, three, we just said. Rejoice evermore, right? Pray without ceasing. Be vocally thankful. And those three things will make the Holy Spirit comfortable around us. He, he'll, he'll desire uh, to bless us. He'll feel relieved. He'll feel happy. So instead of worrying all the time about, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to quench the Spirit. Hey, instead say, I'm going to strive tomorrow. I'm going to strive on Tuesday. I'm going to strive this week to keep the Spirit happy. I want to please the Spirit of God. And those four steps, I believe, as Christians will keep us from having laryngitis or arthritis. And as Christians today, in our personal walk with God, the stronger that gets, the more real that gets to us, the more it will impact the church and keep the church from having laryngitis or arthritis. So tonight, church, stem off laryngitis. Walk with God. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Be vocally thankful and keep the Spirit of God Edge about eyes are closed. Thank you for listening so well. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm going to take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. 
Well, good thing for Nicodemus. He came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital. Because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this. You must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin so that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute and more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, or what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.